My name is Greg Jones. I'm a professor at Southern Oregon University in the Environmental Studies Department. When I first came here, there we were, had less than 20 wineries throughout all of Southern Oregon. And today we have 75 producers. Well, Oregon's kind of an interesting place. We have a, a range of climates that are uh, moving from cool climates up in the Willamette Valley to warmer climates that are in Eastern Oregon or in Southern Oregon. Soil is extremely important. Southern Oregon is in a blending of three mountain ranges, essentially the Western Cascades, the Coastal Mountains, and the Klamath Siskiyous. And there are so many different types of soils tied in there. There may be more types of soils within Southern Oregon than there are in all of the viticulture regions in the world. Some regions have developed based upon the identity of their soil whether it be the chalky soils of Champagne or the limestone soils of Burgundy or whatever they may be. The craft of growing grapes was, is all about how to manage it because grapes left to themselves were really uh, bred uh, to grow in a forested zone where they could grow up through trees and have the canopy be above and garner their solar radiation from that standpoint. So they were a climbing apparatus. You could look at the comparison between corn as a crop versus wine grapes. Corn is a broad acre crop. It can be grown across a very fairly large climate, as long as there's enough water and enough heat to ripen it. Uh, if you look at wine grapes, the, the climate niche for wine grapes is much smaller. So it's got a more of a finite climate. And then when you go to a given variety, you go to Pinot Noir, for example, it even has a much more finer climate niche than, than the rest of the grapes do. Uh, wine, to me, is, uh, is essentially food. You know, you put a little alcohol in anything, it becomes romanticized to one degree or another. Uh, beer has its own thing, mead has its uh, issues. Um, that fall in that same category. But wine has historically had this pretty major uh, kind of uh, romanticism with it. And uh, I think there's something to be said about that. So it's, it's kind of, I guess maybe I'd look at it as both a food and a romantic beverage. When I first came here, everybody said this would be the next Napa Valley. You know, and I think we have the potential to make quality wines and be at that level in terms of a quality standpoint, but we don't have a metropolitan area. We're going to, we will always be a different industry. I think the industry will grow, it will bloom in many, many different ways, but I think it will do it on the basis of uh, regional tourism, much more so than growth around a metropolitan area and a large scale market and the economics that comes from that. Uh, so embracing regionality here will be a very big uh, part for uh, this area. We have a tremendous amount of potential in terms of being a wine region uh, both today and in the future.